The city of Salisville is located approximately 18 kilometers from Riga. In October 1941, near the small town of Salisbury, the Germans began the construction of several concentration camps, which later merged into a camp complex under the general name Extended Police Prison and Reeducation Labor Camp. Officially, the camp for prisoners of war was called Kaiserwald, and for civilian prisoners, Kutternhof. This also adds confusion in the assessments of the concentration camp victims. However, it went down in history under the name of Latvian town, which is quite natural since the management of the camps was uniform. The first prisoners. The builders of the camp and its first prisoners were Jews brought from Germany and Poland. However, ultimately the Jews in this concentration camp numbered less than half of the inmates. Most of the concentration camp's contingent was Soviet prisoners of war, anti-fascist and members of the Communist Party of the Baltic Republics. From the end of 1942, peasants, women and children were being placed in the concentration camp during punitive operation from Belarus, Leningrad and Pskov region. Moreover, a significant portion of the adults were sent further to other camps. And as for children, it was they who created the most ominous reputation for this concentration camp. The first commandant of the concentration camp was Richard Nichols, a sadist who personally tortured and abused the prisoners. Later he was replaced by another one, just like him, Kurt Krause, who always went everywhere accompanied by a shepherd dog, which he set on the prisoners. One of his favorite pastimes in moments of boredom was shooting prisoners who caught his eye. Krause was sitting by the open window of his office and observed the area within sight. And soon as the male or female prisoners appeared in a group or alone, he began shooting at them with a pistol. The prisoners could not immediately understand where they were being shot from, which greatly amused the commandant. Deputy Krause, Otto Techmeyer, was a psychopath. Just like his boss, he loved to attack unsuspecting prisoners suddenly from behind the corner, hitting them on the head with a club or stick. The camp also had its own Dr. Mengele, the doctor assessment Otto Meissner, who organized and conducted experiments on prisoners, primarily on children. The creator of the camp complex near Salispils was the head of police and SD in Riga, SS Oberstombenfuhr Rudolf Lang, a seasoned Gestapo officer and convicted Nazi. Camp Rules The rules in the concentration camp were not just cruel but perverse. For satisfactory work, the prisoners were punished with 10 lashes on the bare back once a week. For unsatisfactory work, they were whipped every day. A poor work assessment equated to a death sentence, and it was virtually impossible to receive a good job grade in the camp. The primary meal for the prisoners was a soup made from vegetable scraps or fish heads, which were usually stale leftover canned food. Prisoners were given a few minutes for food. The guards knocked the dishes out of the hands of prisoners who did not have time to drink their portion of the sludge. The working day lasted at least 14 hours a day. All prisoners were divided into groups according to the number of reprimands received from the administration or wardens. Each group had its own sign, which they wore on the chest. The punishment for the guilty prisoner was announced in the presence of all the barracks residents. Here also the informer was named. The informant was given a concession, a day off or an additional piece of bread, which included bran, something edible, sawdust and other not very edible components. Some prisoners could not stand such condition and asked the guards to give them a bad rating. However, the worst is yet to come. Salaspils is not without reason sometimes called a children concentration camp. Although the children there were a minority, the atrocities committed against them by the SS are beyond comprehension. Little Prisoners Here is a recollection of a female prisoner of the camp, where she was separated from her three children from the village of Shaverki. At night, when their froze grew stronger, the fascists drove us into the yard and forced us to undress completely. People were being hurried, those who didn't obey were beaten. After humiliating us, the Germans forced us to run to the so-called bathhouse. We were washed with cold water. The way back was also running. We had to run a lap around the camp naked, which was a whole kilometer. Inside everything was frozen. My children were crying and freezing from the cold snuggle up to me. Mom, I'm cold, they shout. With tears in my eyes, I pressed them to myself. I rubbed their backs. I was most worried about six-year-old Lucy. She no longer had either tears or strength. The next day, the fascists held an inquiry and separated the mothers and children. 
to the table at which three people were sitting, mothers with children were brought one by one. Sadists specified the age of the child, what the child was ill with, and the name. They recorded information on a piece of cardboard, which they hung on the child's chest, after which the children were taken to one side, the mothers to the other. Mothers rushed to their children and screamed. Children cried, but guards with the buttstocks drove the mothers away. The imprisoned man, watching the scene from behind the barbed wire of the sector, cried, clenching their fist in helpless rage. Anna Nikolaevna remembers shouting, Goodbye, my loved ones. Dead will avenge us for everything. Always stay together. Oleg, take care of the little ones. Anna Nikolaevna's screams were drowned into the overall groan. Anna was most afraid that she would never see her children again. The elder son Oleg and the younger daughter Lucia miraculously survived. There were not enough test tubes for drawing blood. This saved children from death. Another terrible page of cellar spills. This is yet another horrifying page of cellar spills. Under the leadership of the already mentioned Meisner, they drew blood from the children for the needs of German hospitals. The process was streamlined. At least 100,000 prisoners passed through cellar spills, including 12,000 children. According to the incomplete data, 87,000 prisoners were killed in the camp. Among them, at least 8,000 children died in terrible conditions. Former cellar spills prisoners Achille and Alessis, who worked in the children's barrack, recalled, when we, a few women, appeared in the barrack, a terrible scene opened before us. In the barracks, on bare bunks, lay children of different ages. Some of them could only crawl and some couldn't even sit. 500 children of different ages. Infants were so smeared that their eyes were not visible. But even ruthlessly exploding, the guards saved resources too. The children were given only 100 gram of the so-called camp bread and a ball of the vegetable peel slop. Krauss loved to make ostentatious films for his Führer. For this purpose, not yet completely weakened children were washed, dressed in new clothes, seated at tables covered with white tablecloth, where dishes had white bread, bowls had proper soup, dressed plates had marmalade, and glasses had jelly. Guards before filming strictly instructed the starving children not to pounce on the food, but to eat calmly. End of the camp. At the end of summer 1944, the Nazis began to cover up their tracks. The corpses of those killed, hanged, gassed or shot, which were buried, were dug up and burned by the Nazis. The remaining prisoners of the concentration camp were transferred to the Stadthof camp. The barracks and all the camp equipment were burned. However, they still did not manage to completely erase the traces of their crimes. There are testimonies from eyewitnesses, victims of the concentration camps, statements of the assessment and some documents. Otto Meissner in 1949 was acquitted by German court for lack of evidence. Subsequently, he was several times tried to be held accountable, but each time he managed to wriggle out. He died in 1953. Anna survived the fascist dungeons and after the war found her two surviving children, the older Oleg and the younger Lucia. The fate of the middle one, Genia, remained unknown. Apparently, the child perished in the concentration camp. At the site of the former camp, a memorial complex is located today, which is now actually not in very good condition.